What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of Sky Terran to Grandmaster. In the last episode, Sky Terran looked incredibly strong, looked straight up broken in some aspects in TVT. Today, let's try to get to the same level of power. Let's go. Alright, our first opponent is actually going to be Neuro, a Zerg streamer in Grandmaster. Alright, so the last episode we got two TVTs, like I said, Sky Terran looks super strong. Let's see if we can look as strong against Zerg. Now, the first things first, I do want to figure out an opener that I like against Zerg. I think I might actually play kind of the opposite as in the other matchups. Because in TVT, what I like to do is I go for something like Banshee Viking. Sometimes maybe Ravens in the mix. Uh, and then eventually end up with Battlecruisers. Against Zerg, however, it's actually very plausible to open up with Battlecruisers. So maybe I can go BC and then go into Banshees later. That would be uh, quite funny to see. The only problem is, since I'm not allowed to make factory units of any sort, I'm not allowed to have more than five Marines. Surviving until you get a Battlecruiser out is probably quite the challenge. In that case, a Banshee would be safer. But I actually have a technique for that. And I'm going to share that uh, with you guys for your ladder games as well. If you like to play Battlecruisers. Something you can actually do if you play BC against Zerg. Because even if you're allowed to make factory units. If you follow a proper build order. Uh, and you go BC against Zerg. You would probably die to a Rochalin. So a counter to that is what you can do. Is you can start a Banshee. And then try to scout their base over and over with the Reapers and the Hellions, which you would normally have. And then as the Banshee comes close to finishing, if you realize there's no Roaches on the way, you can then cancel the Banshee and start the Battlecruiser. And it doesn't impact your build order at all, but it does increase safety against Roaches. And I think that's what I'm going to go for. Now, Neuro, I think I haven't had the pleasure of playing him too much. I've played him... I want to say at least twice as far as I can remember. I don't quite remember his style though. But uh, this is another one of those crazy reads that I have. Judging from his personality, he's probably more of a macro player. I feel like he just really... You know, I've, he's one of those per people that is really like Zen uh, advocates. Like, you know, proper reactions, learning from your mistakes and stuff on the stream. So I feel like he would be the kind of person to play a proper macro game. At least that's kind of what I expect. Now, obviously reading into people's personality for their you know starcraft builds is maybe a little bit far-fetched but uh let's see if my theory is correct guys who knows now i'm gonna use this reaper to scout for a second i thought i made a mistake by making a reaper but then i remembered i'm actually allowed to make a reaper so thank goodness for that and then hopefully i will get to torture him a little bit you know force a little bit of panic early on would be nice kill a few drones here and there i'm actually gonna send my marine here just to annoy him I'm not going to be able to kill an overlord with that, but it might, you know, distract him a little bit, be a little bit annoying, and that's what you want. Wasting people's APM is always good. I'm not going to be too risky with this Reaper, because I wanted to scout Roach attacks later on. Actually losing a lot of HP on these Zerglings, by the way. A little bit more than you would normally want. Kill two of them. Other one is low HP. He might have actually been distracted by that Marine, by the way. That it would have been a massive success. Drone is low HP. His queen is here, by the way. Um, so that's why I'm able to get in here. Unless he's doing something cheeky and he doesn't have a queen. No, it's actually there. Just like I thought. Uh, what am I going to do with this factory? I do not know. Now, this Reaper is doing way more damage than it normally would. So, that's really nice. Going to target down this Zergling. Uh, not targeting it down so far. There we go. Going to get both of them. Now, where is the queen? I think I can actually escape in between here. Yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Going to go for a third gas. I trade that base. I do need to find uh, the hatchery, though. I imagine there's a hatchery here. Gonna make a bunker just in case. So there is a hatchery. It's almost finished. Still gonna make the bunker though. And the biggest upside of my build here is that I have marines. Normally you only have one marine. Early game TVZ. But since I have multiple, I should be able to deny the overlord scout pretty easily, I would say. I do think my build is gonna look abso absolutely absurd. Because I'm gonna go for BC into Banshee. That is probably not something anyone has ever done. Well, someone has probably done it, you know, on accident at some point. But it is definitely not a standard build. So this is probably going to catch my opponent off guard. Though, obviously, if the build is never done, there's a reason for it. And the reason is that it's not that good of a build, right? So uh, we'll see how it works out. There's no Roach Warren or anything, so we don't have to be afraid. Uh, and that is really good for us. So it seems like my theory about his personality is checking out, guys. That is fantastic news. The reads, guys. It's not just the portraits. I also read people's personalities now. That is the next level that we have achieved. Wait, is this Reaper going to escape? Oh, no. He has another queen. Okay. I, I guess he actually didn't have a single Zergling left, right? So there was definitely potential there. So, what am I going to start first? I'm going to go for Banshee Speed. It's really funny. If he would scout this, 
it looks like I'm playing Cloak Banshee, but I'm actually playing Battlecruiser plus Banshee Speed. It, it even sounds like I'm misspeaking because it just sounds so stupid to me to be doing something like this. All right, did I see the shadow of an overlord? I did see that. I'm actually going to be a bit crazy here and just try to kill it. Uh, before it actually gets to see anything. There's probably Zerglings out here, but that's okay. Go. An Overlord kill is always nice. If he has a few Lynx, I think at this point I'm probably still going to kill the Overlord. There we go. Even if I lose the Lynx for it, that's nice. I think I'll just take them on an adventure, actually. I think uh, returning those back home safely is going to be rough if he has any unit presence nearby. So I might as well just go across the map. And then I guess I'll play Triple... Triple Starport Banshee? Okay, so he does have a spore ready. Let me just shift click a few drones. Definitely misclicking a few of those. And then get cloak on this one. If there's only one queen, you can easily... This is why battle cruisers are so good, by the way. If you... Uh, actually, a tip I can give you guys. If you struggle with harassment, because uh, it's just too APM intensive, it's really good to use battle cruisers because battle cruisers, it's very hard to kill them. Uh, they shoot well moving. So even if you don't have the APM to, you know, target the right things, if you kind of right click over someone's base, you're still going to be doing a good amount of damage. So it's like a very safe harassment tool. If you do lose, it is a pretty big deal. So if you really don't trust yourself, then maybe don't go for it. But I do think it's a, it's a very good harassment tool nonetheless. I don't think I should be able to kill this hatchery. I feel like he uh, is going to show up with his queens any moment now. Not yet, though. Somehow. I mean, I'll take it. You're really not going to save this. That would be insane. Okay, so he has a lot of units here. These marines are not safe. He's actually going to lose that hatchery. Now he's going to see that I played <laughs> Battlecruiser into Banshee. He's actually going to lose it. No cancel as well, meaning he lost a bunch of uh, minerals for that as well. 300 minerals to be precise. I don't think this CC is going to fall. So all in all, these traits are really good for me. I do need to get some Vikings up though. Let's see. Yeah, there is a Spire. Exactly. So I do really need these Vikings. Also going to make a few turrets already. Maybe I can even kill this gas. It's going to be really good against the Mutas. And I think I should probably stop making... Oh, I didn't actually get the gas. That sucks. Uh, I should probably stop making Banshees now. Because else the mutas will just tear me to shreds. I do have speed already, which is nice. Five speed benches on the way. Probably doesn't expect quite this many. Let me get a repair on this BC. Get another turret. And then I'm just going to cloak. Five benches is enough to two-shot queens, I believe. So if I find a nice trade... There we go. Oh, I die so fast. It's beautiful. Going to kill some drones. He's making an evolution chamber. Uh, probably just for upgrades, if I would have to guess. Let's try to get some more damage here. Oh, that's a queen I can two-shot. There we go. Actually, very nice harassment. And there are the mutalists like I predicted. Now, the biggest problem for me is that mutas are actually fast enough to catch speed banshees. Uh, all he needs is an overseer with speed as well. I'm going to make uh, a planetary fortress here, as we usually do. I actually could use some reactors. I'm going to put one of my starports over there. And then we're going to go for my very well-known, at this point, 5cc setup. If you guys have watched my YouTube oh, over the last year, you'll know that in all my challenges against Zerg, uh, where I like to get a little bit campy, I always go for my 5cc setup. Normally, I get this as a planetary as well, but here it's probably not necessary, I think. I'm just going to make some more Vikings. I got my armories on the way. Let's kill that Overseer. He does not have enough Mutas, I believe. Uh, my Banshees, or my BC plus the Vikings, should be able to deal with this pretty handily. Especially with some repairs. There we go, and he's gonna fly away. I have 78 SEVs, that's quite good. Uh, with Sky Terran, I really like to get to 100 even, because... I'm, you know, it's, it takes so long to max out on Sky Terran, you might as well make a lot of SEVs and... Make sure you can actually re-max, that's an important part of it. Now, should I get my Engineering Bay upgrades? Probably. See? Oh, I'm so glad that I have these Vikings. Vikings are actually surprisingly good against Mutas. The main problem is that you never get to build Vikings against Mutas, basically. Um, because, yeah, when are you ever going to have, you know, <laughs> five Starports to counter a bunch of Mutalists where you can just make Marines instead or, or Thors or something like that? There's a lot of links moving to the left side. So I'm just going to move my uh, army to the left as well. I need to go for... What's it called? I need to go for... Um, servos as well so i can actually land my vikings fast now these are going to be in a little bit of trouble the links are all going to die though looks like he's playing mass mutalist so i'm actually going to make liberators instead 
He doesn't... Oh, he does have an overseer with speed. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so he is probably gonna catch those. Should all die, I think. But maybe not. I guess we'll find out. Let's get a sensor tower here. Saturate this base on the right side a little bit better. Because I do actually have enough SCVs. Maybe I can juke him. This could be a legendary juke. Let's see. Because he tried to cut me off. You can see that he was trying to cut me off. Maybe I can get back in and kill a bunch of drones here that he's just transferring. There we go. I'm sending my entire army to deal with it. And at the same time, I'm actually killing a lot of drones, like I said, which is fantastic. Um, ooh, my Vikings are going to be a little bit late. Ah, it's because I didn't actually have them in the air. That's unfortunate. Also has a lot of units on the right side. Okay, can I actually hold position this. Maybe he doesn't uh, pay attention enough. Let's see, I'm actually going to teleport my BC on the links on the left side there to actually deal with it, because else I would have... A little bit more problems. So these Banshees are doing fantastic. They got 23 kills in total already when I checked. Oh, and now I need to send my Vikings there. I have Libs, but it's actually not enough, I believe. Oh, I do have five Liberators. If, if he's targeting the B... Oh, he's targeting the BCs! He's not targeting the Liberators! Oh my goodness. Look at the damage on those. He also doesn't have an armor upgrade, and I do have attack. That was really close. If he wasn't paying attention for one more second, he would have lost all of those. And now since they're super bruised, I'm actually going to go ahead across the map. Let me get my Liberator range as well. Um, and then I need to seize all of these and land my Vikings on top. There we go. Do need to make sure my Battlecruiser is here. I'm actually going to unseize these. And then I should be having a really good time here. Because I also have the landed Vikings. Or the lifted Vikings rather. I did lose all of my units on that side. It is a pretty close trade here. But I think we're winning out. Because I'm going to be able to seize these Liberators. Let's see. I have a few Libs here as well. Get a few more CCs. And this should be very nice. Land the Vikings. He could be making more Mutalisks as well. But it's not really going to be super effective. Mutalisk really is a snowball unit. He is still making them though. Crazy enough. There we go. Let's get those back in the air. I did not get my servos upgrade yet. That was a good reminder there. So to resaturate this base now. Um, and I guess I'll just keep landing them. I'm making mass liberators at this point. Which is... A little bit sketch, uh, but they are very fast, and they can deal with both the ground and the air, and that's kind of what I need right now. Still have 73 SCVs, which is really not that bad. He does have a lot of units here, though. He's actually just really dedicating or committing to the air units. Kind of surprising, but I guess if it works, it works. Maybe it's time for me to land my Vikings. I mean, he does not have enough units to contest this. I'm going to land the Vikings here. I should probably be focusing on getting extra upgrades. Because um, Liberators really need the upgrades to do their full potential. Okay. The only reason he's going is because Liberators don't do enough damage against the Corruptors. But I can simply pick up the Vikings. There we go. And I really have like a snowball comp here. Because uh, he doesn't have enough Corruptors to really compete. I think now he does. And I don't want to be fighting single fire. You can tell my Liberators are really just tickling these Corruptors. Even though it's so many. I mean, I do actually have so many, so I can probably stick around for a little bit longer. Don't really like these trades, though. I mean, as, as soon as, as long as he's leaving these Vikings alone, it's actually not that bad at all. Let's resaturate those gases. Okay. Probably siege two liberators. That should be enough. Meanwhile, I'm gonna try to get more Vikings out. Does he have, oh, he does have an air upgrade now as well. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. Oh, he's going to clump these. That's all right. If I ever get, like, to shoot multiple at once, then it's going to be a pretty good trade. You guys could see the difference there, right? Okay. Now, I'm really just spawn camping him, I guess. Killing everything that comes out of the eggs. Let's see? <laughs> it's like 20 liberators, and they still take a while to die. Now I actually got a few Vikings, though, which is nice. Let me get those there. Probably rally my bases over here, actually. We need to unsiege. This is such an awkward army to fight with. Like, one spore crawler is actually kind of terrifying. I mean, I'm getting more and more Vikings. At some point, I could consider going for BCs. But I feel like it would, uh, you know, kind of kidnap my momentum, I guess. I would not be able to uh, keep the pressure up if I go for BCs here. There we go. Oh, he's going to try to fight this. I have enough Vikings here right now. I guess the Vikings, he definitely cannot fight. Just gonna land these real quick. Now I do have my servos upgrade, so I can kind of own this. And there we go. Well played is called. 
And we have beaten a Zerg. I wouldn't say it looked super strong what I did, but I feel like our moves were clutch enough. Let's look at the units lost. It's about double, a little bit less than double, 12.7 against 24.3. Worker skilled 57 against 39. Relatively even, relatively civil. I feel like we've definitely had a game before where I've killed 200 workers in another series. Uh, but it was a really good one. In the other composition was 16 libs and 15 vikings. I think the only thing I could have done better is maybe balance the Viking Liberator level a little bit because Vikings and Liberator is definitely what I needed. But sometimes it felt like I maybe could have done better, get a few more Vikings early or a few more Liberators early. Anyway, this is for game number one. Let's keep it going. All right, we got a Protoss. Ooh, that is a pretty high MMR Protoss though, guys. How are we going to be able to deal with that? A 5-5 Grandmaster Protoss that is probably top 50 Grandmaster, I believe. That is going to be a little bit of a tough one. I do remember... We had one very successful game on this specific map. That was actually our first Grandmaster opponent back then. And I think we won by usage of a little battle cruiser. So maybe that is the way to go. Actually, I should probably switch around what I did the last game. I think there's a few options. I could do a crazy Viking all in. I've done that before. Could work if my opponent messes up. Or I could go for Banshee into battle cruiser. Because here, if I go for a BC first, I would get absolutely ravaged by any kind of blink opener. But maybe I could go Banshees, keep him at home, and then get into BCs, try to set up my own base with planetaries. That is probably the way to go here. Though I do think a uh, deadly 4-gate blink build could probably ravage us just like that. So I need to be very, very careful. Should I go for a double gas or not? I think I'm going to skip the double gas for now. Um... Mainly a little bit afraid of those new openers Protoss does. Just It's a little bit of meta gaming going on here, but um, opening double gas on one base against Protoss became meta about one year ago, I think when I started doing it in DreamHack Europe. Ever since then, a lot of the top Terran players do it, and even now they still do it. I watched Maru recently at DreamHack do it every single game against Protoss, but personally, I feel like it's getting a little bit outdated. I think people are starting to find the answers, they're starting to defend easily, meaning your opponent just opening just puts you behind in terms of economy but also they're finding ways to punish it which can just kill you straight out so not really a huge fan of the double gas anymore and here i'm gonna skip it as well because i'm afraid of any of those kind of counter builds um i personally think for example four gate blink a very popular build is automatically really good against double gas because double gas just doesn't have enough units and economy both to deal with it you can defend it but you're not even going to be ahead or you can try to be ahead but then you'll most likely just die so not my favorite situation to be in now i'm not quite sure how Sephiron plays the game I, I, I we've played him before for sure i would guess it probably has to be the mass marine medifactor gm series not 100 percent sure but probably that one uh, but i don't quite remember how that game played out he does have double gas he has a second pylon so this all looks completely standard to me. Let's get a bunker up as well. Um, let's see, is there any other step I need to take? I think with five marines, we should be able to defend. I think the most important thing is that we figure out if it's a Stargate or not. If it is a Stargate, I need to get an eBay down, I think, for turrets. Normally, you'd never want to, you know, be doing that much of a commitment um, to just an Oracle. But if you're only allowed to make five marines... Obviously, the dynamic does change a little bit. Okay, saturate this gas over here. Check the back. That's usually where they put the tech. And it is indeed a Stargate. Now, he's blocking me with a probe. But in response, I'm just going to kill the probe and get out anyway. Oh, never mind. There's a second attempt. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too brave by me. That's my bad. Um, I mean, I think it's okay. I scouted what I needed to scout. And that's about it, really. So, this does change things, guys. Because against the Stargate... I think you simply cannot go for Banshees. So I might have to do something a little bit insane like... Vikings into Battlecruiser? Uh, I guess I could try to sniff out whether he's going for Phoenix or an Oracle. If it's an Oracle, I can defend it. Go into BCs after. If it's Phoenixes, I'll probably just have to keep making Vikings and... I don't know, hope I find some kind of genius timing that works out for us. Doesn't sound like a very solid plan, but you know, desperate times need desperate measures. I'm going to go for Reactor Viking here. Keep the Marines in the main. An annoying thing here is that I kind of have to guess where he's going if it's an Oracle. Um, if the Oracle goes into my natural, I'm not going to have defense for it. But I think, okay, it is an Oracle plus Adept move. And I actually cannot counter it, sadly, with my build order. So I'm just going to have to accept that I'm going to be behind. Um, and that's it. Not the biggest deal ever. Definitely going to put us behind. But realistically, we should always be behind anyway. Uh, playing and stuff like this. It doesn't look like he's trying to target anything. Okay, there we go. 
If he flies next to the starport, no, that would have been brilliant if he did. Let's see. Maybe I can find the Oracle. It's actually not a bad idea, I think. Try to find the Oracle here. Let's cancel that depot, make another one. Couldn't find that Oracle, sadly. Can I get on the low ground? I feel like I'm also playing with a little bit of ping. Yeah, I was wondering. I'm playing on the Australian server. Sadly, the uh, American server does have an Australian server as well, so that's what I'm playing on right now, unfortunately. Let's see if I can kill one of the adepts at least. That'd be nice. I think I'm gonna get one. Yeah, there we go. Pretty good micro by him. Barely not good enough. Now, he came back in with the Oracle. That means he probably is gonna lose this Oracle for a few SCVs, which is uh, pretty okay with me, actually. Now, I need to find a way to do damage. I think... It's just time for me to YOLO here. I actually kept my economy relatively intact somehow. Not quite sure how that happened. I think I'm gonna do a scan. Okay, so he is making phoenixes. Hmm. Against phoenixes, I don't think I'll be able to fly across. But if I don't do any damage, it's just gonna start looking a little bit tragic. I'm afraid. I think six vikings is a pretty healthy count though. So maybe with these six vikings, I can actually go for it. Um, and then... Not quite sure about the BC transition. It really depends on what's building in this twilight. If it's blink, I think I'm screwed. If it's charge, I might actually be able to fly over his base and wreak havoc. That was uh, what I'm hoping for right here. He doesn't have the, the third base there, at least. Let's see what I can find. Okay, there's nothing here. He's still making phoenixes, so he has them somewhere. I just need to make sure to actually lift in time if he comes. He warped in a stalker there, which makes me think it's probably blink. There we go, I'm gonna lift these. Gonna... Oh, actually, that's a pretty good trade for me. He has one less uh, unit than me, so I'm gonna be able to kill most of his units. He's trying to fly them away. Micro, not quite good enough on his side, luckily for us. Let's see. Oh, yeah, pretty good trader, actually. Uh, I guess I kind of have to be thankful for his micro for that. Even gonna kill this last phoenix. Wow, okay. And now I'm gonna land here. Gonna be able to one-shot a bunch of probes. And this went about as well as it possibly could have. Let's see, how many probes is that dead? Is that like nine probes dead or something? Oh my god, that was ridiculous. Um, how can I... Oh, I'm gonna lose that Viking. I think I could have kept that alive. It was a little bit better about it. Gonna get Yamato, and I'm gonna get a bunch of bunkers here. I wasn't able to see if he has this third base, but I just kind of imagine that he does else... Else I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> to be honest. So uh, I kind of imagine that he just has that. I'm not sure how I can keep my base alive. Oh, I lost a few marines, so I can rebuild those. Um, and now I have one battlecruiser. I'm going to teleport it straight across because I need to keep him at home. If he manages to attack me, we're going to be a little bit sad. Here we go. Yeah, yes, Phoen phoenixes are very, very, very bad against BCs, by the way. He does have blink. Uh, you can tell by the fact that he doesn't have charge. Unless he went for glaives, which is just... A little bit absurd. Let's see. And now I think I think we're actually in a decent spot here because he's at home. If he wasn't at home, I wouldn't be super stoked about this. Oh, he actually made two batteries here. Okay. Uh, he was a little bit scared then, I imagine. Okay. Does he have charge yet? You can actually see it here. Still no charge, so it must be blink. Yeah, I haven't seen him blink his stalkers once. That's why I'm a little bit uh, confused. Now, I can kill these probes on the outside out of range of battery, so this is very nice. I mean, all we need is time. If we have enough time... Oh, I almost launched a mule in his base on accident. If we have enough time, we're going to be able to win out here. If he doesn't give us time, probably the opposite. Um, don't go across the map. I don't want that. That was an accident. And now I'm going to teleport one battery cruiser there as well. See, that's a void ray building, I believe, so I need to be careful. I do have a teleport out anyway, so it's fine. Now I can maybe send the thingy back there. He actually used his battery overcharge on that. I'm gonna kill a Stalker here. Very nice. Throw down a Yamato as well. There we go. And he doesn't... I know he doesn't have a, a battery overcharge. And his Viking is just going ham. Let me distract the Zealots. Look at that Viking. He doesn't realize the Viking is destroying him right now. That's absolutely beautiful. These batteries are about to run out of energy, I believe. There we go. Viking is 10 kills, guys. Holy crap. Let's see, I'm gonna kill that one stalker. Oh, he does have the phoenixes still. I did forget about those. It's actually a pretty close trade here, by the way. Phoenixes really did not uh, scale well against these. But I think in the end, this trade was amazing for me. There we go. Two more battle cruisers. Probably get a Yamato on the Void Ray plus kill it. There we go. That's one Void Ray gone. We do need to be very careful here, though. 
Maybe I can get that. I think I'm actually gonna be able to kill both these units. There we go. Beautiful. And now I'm gonna get my upgrades, get a few more CCs and an eBay so I can make planetaries. Get this battle cruiser over there. Oh, this gas actually wasn't saturated. That's a pretty big oversight by me. And now I think we're in the spot where I can just keep jumping back and forth between his bases. Get one of those in each base. Get a Yamato off on the Stalker. Here I'm gonna Yamato the battery instead, actually. So I'm gonna be able to do damage instead of shooting a freaking battery over and over. That's a little bit frustrating to do. Uh, I'm actually... I have so many SUVs, I can't even use them all anymore. Luxury problem, I suppose. There we go, let's get a few of those. Oh, he is actually getting on top of that one very fast, unfortunately. Maybe I can still Yamato one of them. There we go. He's really just walking back and forth. I think at some point he's going to want to try and kill us. That point might be now, because I don't see him anymore. So I feel like it's very plausible to assume he's just going for it. He's like, I've been tortured long enough. It is time for me to go across the map and really deal some damage. So getting these battle cruisers repaired is going to be important. Get the marines in there. I'm actually going to be able to depower all of his... Oh, he's making Tempest. Ooh, this is such a nice scout for me, actually, guys. He's going for Tempest, but I can depower his pylons. He really should have stayed at home here. Because Tempest are absolutely amazing uh, against what he's doing. Can I repair that PC? Oh, almost. That would have been perfect. I do think I have enough units here, though, uh, to be able to win this fight. I do need to be very careful. I mean, his entire production is depowered. He barely has anything at this point. I also have a fourth battle cruiser here showing up, which is nice. And there we go. We have actually done it. The 5-5 five, five Protoss. And you can tell here how close this game was despite all the damage. If you look at the supplies, 98 against 133 when he had 1,200, 500 in the bank. If he defended a little bit better, this really could have been his, but it went our way. Here he actually has a better economy than me because I don't have this base landed yet. But very happy with how this went. We beat a good GM Zerg and a good GM Protoss. Units lost. About 50% more for him. 6.1 against 9k. Workers killed 46 against 37. Once again, pretty even. Uh, but the outplays were there. He managed to make it happen. And beating a 5-5 Protoss actually, I think, is pretty legendary with Sky Terran. Super happy with this. Aramor is going to be at our peak. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.